Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and this is my workshop. And today I'm going to bring you part four of Old Cat Rescue, or a rebuild of an abandoned uh, Caterpillar 206B FT rubber duck. Uh, now, if you haven't seen the previous videos, uh, take a look in the description below and you can find the links there. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you hit the like and the subscribe button and don't forget to turn your notifications on so you don't miss any upcoming videos in the series. Uh, so today, we're going to take a more in-depth look at the pump. We'll finish the script on and we'll see how much damage was done. I'm going to take you through the process of getting replacement parts and uh, you might have a look at the prices on that and some machine work that has to be done and uh, hopefully we'll progress from there onto actual reassembly of the pump. And then next time I will hopefully be bolting that pump onto the machine. We'll get the thing up and running and with any luck, we'll get the thing driving. So stay tuned. So we've already been out and um, did some power washing. This is the bell housing of the pump um, and this is part of the main body. So I'm just going to turn this on its side so you can better look at it. Um, so that was the piece that was full of metal filings in the previous videos. So we've thoroughly cleaned that out um, because there was no hydraulic components left and this was quite simple as I to just take it down the road and um, Steam clean the whole thing. Now, and I have to be a little bit more careful with the remainder of the pump. Just bring it in here, show you. Uh, so this is the back end of the pump. Um, so this will turn like that and sit on top of our bell housing over here. So it'll just bolt up the top there. I'm not going to do that just yet because obviously bell housing is clean and this thing is filthy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip, I'm just start stripping some of the remaining components off it. The um, thing is fairly heavily um, contaminated with bits of metal. So I'm going to break it down into its components. Um, if I think it's safe, then I'm going to take it away and um, steam clean it. And if not, I'm just going to clean it with carb cleaner or a bit of degreaser or something here on the bench. So I'm just going to check this piece out. Okay. So. There is an awful lot of metal inside in this chamber. Not sure exactly what this does, but this is one of the um, servo pistons. Now this has been damaged as well. I'll just bring it up there so you can see it. This has had the end that goes onto the swash plate damaged. And I um, also managed to do more damage here by dropping it. So I need to get this piston out of here. And unfortunately, that could delay the rebuild. I think we're going to have to argue our, our replacement piston. Not sure how long that's going to take. So I'm just going to withdraw this. And um, we can start cleaning up the block then. See how we look. Okay, so I figured the best thing to do was to um, strip down the pump into kind of its main components and uh, steam clean the whole thing because it was just covered in dirt and grease. Uh, so I'll just run through what's here. Uh, I'll just make sure we're in there. So we've got three pumps in one basically, they all bolt to each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the back and I'm gonna work my way forward. Um, just make sure that we've got all the metal filings out of each section and um, any water that has gone in there during the uh, steam cleaning that we've got that out. So it's the rearmost pump. Right. 
comparatively quicker than expected. So, looking at it, it actually doesn't look bad. Um, I'm going to take out these plugs, just make sure that we've nothing in there, but from what I can see, we don't seem to have um, any metal. Let's take those out and check. Um, front section. Again, seems to be plenty of oil in there. There is some metal there that has just come back through the second pump, so I'm going to give this a third clean. But um, actual pump itself, let's see, show you how this one works. It is gear type pump, so I'm just going to take that out. And so you can see there are two gears here, which mesh together. Pump the oil. So again, I'm just going to pull these as a precaution. I'm going to make sure that there's none of this metal in here and um, clean it up. I wrap it in with a cling film and put it back together and uh, have it safe for the rebuild. So as you can see, the body of that pump is in good condition. Um, small little bit of wear in there, but nothing excessive. Doesn't appear to be any metal in there, which is a good sign. So I'm just going to give it a quick clean and um, get all the seals back in here, reassemble it, and um, wrap, wrap it up in cling film then. Just put it to one side. So that was a complete um, pig of a job. I finally got that pumped back together. The trick with these seems to be to um, not to try inserting the bearings at the end, but to um, assemble them, assemble the pistons and things first, and then uh, put them together. And I've just noticed I turn around these around by around, I'm gonna have to strip it again. <laughs> Since starting to bolt everything back together, um, I'm going to torque everything at once. Just be that bit easier rather than trying to catch it in the voice there when it's sitting on the back of the main pump, tighten everything up. So, um, really, all we need to do with this now is to um, give it a, as I say, torque those and uh. Walter, well, we'll wrap her up then in a bit of uh, cling film. So I'm just going to set them on side. So this is pump number two. Um, just going to uh, blow this through with the airline. I've actually washed this one out. There was an awful lot of um, metal foilings in it. Let's see just the camera over. One more look. It's 
So you can see the bearings in this one are slightly different to the previous one. Um, there is... No, it's, it's alright actually. I think that's just an oil way. I thought it was damaged first. See inside of the housing, that one doesn't look bad. There's a bit of moisture in there, so I'm just going to blow it out with the compressor. assembly that goes on the back of the machine. I'm going to have to check the photographs afterwards to make sure it still fits or that I've done it right and this will bolt to the back of the um, head of the pump over there which I'll show you in two minutes. I'm just going to try and bolt this together some kind of way so that I don't lose our position. You realize we can't we're gonna to have to assemble everything so what i'm going to do with this one is stand it over here and i am going to fish um or i'm going to wrap some clean film around it afterwards that is that pump that pair of the pumps completely clean now all right so next piece is I call the head of the pump okay so with this big block here uh, I'm gonna drop this on actually just so you can see exactly the way this goes together and just line up the little dimple on the head and up here okay so this is the way that sits on the pump, okay. And then we have this little block sits on the side, and then our three pumps, which if I pick up now, I think are gonna fall apart completely. These, these sit in right here on the top. Good news, we have finally got the last of the parts for the pump in our cat. So this has come from MH Hydraulics in the Netherlands. Uh, so I'm just gonna open it up. We got some packaging. We got some more packaging. We got more packaging. And we have got the most expensive part to go into the pump so far. This is the small servo piston. So this is it. Uh, it's not even fully complete. There's another little part that treads in here that we'd reuse off the pump, uh, which had a small little bit of damage, but replacing that would have cost another 103 euros. So rather than replace the damaged part, I decided I would go and replace part of it. So that's where this comes in. So this huge packet contains a hollow rivet, according to this label. It's got its own little part number. 
So there's a rivet on the front. This thing costs 12 euros, so one bag, two bags, and this bag appears to be empty, or it's actually not. So this is what 12 euros buys you in Lindy parts. This is a hollow rivet that holds a tiny little piece of metal onto um, the servo piston. So it's um, 12 euros for that tiny little part plus delivery. So I'm going to pop this back into the envelope before it goes missing and put the envelope into its bigger envelope and package the whole thing up again. So it's now Thursday evening, I'm just back from my week's work. Um, work again tomorrow, so the plan is to get to the workshop tomorrow evening and start reassembling the pump. So we've done a video on that and um, try and drop it back in the machine hopefully on Saturday, possibly Sunday. Get it filled up with oil, we get the engine fired up and the suit machine actually move. So fingers crossed, this weekend we find the answer to the question if this machine is going to run or not. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to start the assembly in reverse. Um, I just want to make sure that everything lines up correctly. Okay, so the first component we're going to drop in there is going to be this carrier for the uh, swash plate. So I'm going to put that into position. Uh, there is a marker on this, so I know it's the right way in the right place. Just there, and there's a dimple down there. problem has just come to light. Um, this was used by the machine shop who machined the swash plate just to make sure that it was level. Now they took the bearing carrier out and I never pressed it back into position properly so I was starting to drop the components in just to see that everything lined up and they wouldn't. The cylinder block was protruding out the back here so I just need to get this in. Luckily there's um, some witness lines in here. Will you show me where to line it up? So there's a little roll pin. Uh, so in the housing, this needs to line up. It, and this has got a dimple in the back of it that has to line up. So I need to make sure that that fits exactly in that position. clearances and it's still slightly proud um, here at the rear end so I just need to um, nip down that bearing carrier a bit more so this is just to show you we'll run through all this again in a minute but um, this is the valve plate on the back of the pump and this is the cylinder block so that the pistons and that in the hull, retainer plate and things are still here to go in. Um, this is the swash plate. Oh, just get that out of there. And try shaft and bearing. So um, I just need to nip this tiny bit, I can still feel as well here a tiny little bit of a gap and just sitting in here so that just needs to be nipped up another bit
Okay, so um, it's now Saturday evening. I uh, just kind of seem to get a break at this pump. I was a little bit dubious about the way part of it went together because it had been damaged when I started. So I dropped over to see a neighbour and showed him the parts and he pointed out that there was three small pins missing from it. I've been back and I've looked at the diagram and he's correct. Um, never spotted it before, they weren't in the bottom of the pump. Must have been completely mangled, so that is going to delay us. Uh, the, no, we could probably get those easily enough, but the other problem we have is the new servo piston that was delivered. He's not happy with the quality of it. Um, there's a few small cracks in, in um, the metal where it's been pressed down on the ball joint and on the other end. So. Um, he reckons it just needs to be replaced, so we're going to have to wait for the supplier to come back. Uh, going to contact him Monday and see if we can get a replacement part. But look, in the meantime, I'll just run through, um, I suppose, the work that has been done, the pump and the parts we've got, and um, just go through the machine work and things, and I'll show you how the pump works briefly, and we'll just have to come back to the assembly in another video. I hope to be able to bring you a full video of it and bring a video of the machine running by the end of the weekend, but it's looking highly unlikely now, so we'll get started. So, this is the first part that sits inside the body of the pump. Uh, this sits at the engine end of it, so it's um, kind of bearing for the smash plate to rock on, and it's also got a little carrier here for the front bearing of the pump. So, I'll show you where that sits. That will sit down in here. Um, this little thing here will locate it in the correct position so I'm just going to put it up here so that I can demonstrate the inside of the pump so that you can actually see what I'm doing so that is sitting there um, next thing then that sits on that is the main pump shaft so that sits in there like so um, then we have the swash plate so I'm going to take my fingers off. So this swash plate was damaged. Um, let's see if I can get a better shot at this. Oh yeah, you can see it here. So you might remember from the previous video there was a big gouge taken out of it here. So uh, I had a machine shop fill that with a filler rod and polished the surface to serve it flat. So that is now perfect. It's as good as new. So that sits there. Uh, now, I'm going to try to put the camera on the bench for the next part. Okay. Now, what we have next is cylinder block assembly and pistons. And also in here then we have the ball guide and this retainer plate. Now, the part we're, we're missing is actually the little pins that sit in here, but look. I'm going to assemble this and show you how the pump works. Um, these were the remains, that was the remain of the original guide plate, that's a piston foot, and that's a piston. So, the, um, this cylinder block uh, has been honed. So the tops of the boards are slightly damaged. Just got to go to hone those, and as well as that, the brass surface on the underside, which um, makes contact with the valve plate, that was just given a, a polish. Um, ball guide in here is new, and of course the retainer plate is new uh, because the old one is smashed. So I'm just going to drop that in place. Okay, so I managed to get the main components of the pump assembled, so I'm just going to do a demonstration. So, this is a swash plate, um, retainer plate, ball guides inside, cylinder block, and of course all the pistons, all nine of them. 
So, when the pump is at idle, so there's no levers operating in the machine, it spins like this. So, as you can see, pistons are not moving up and down the bores, so they're not pumping oil. The system's just at a constant pressure. So, then, if we operate a lever, uh, the servo pistons will allow the swash plate to rotate and as you can see then as it rotates as the assembly rotates pistons are going to go in and out and pump the oil then when we release the lever again it's going to go back to center and it will just kind of sit there for evening like that so that's kind of the basics of what's inside in this pump um, obviously there's a bit more control wise and things here but um, that is the majority of the workings of, it, of a piston variable displacement pump so um, I guess all I, all I can do now really is start doing some other work in the machine until such time as parts arrive I'm afraid that's all for this episode. Until we get some parts and cannot finish the pump rebuild, uh, there's another video coming shortly with just some other work we've done in the machine, like cleaning out the diesel tank, getting the hydraulics ready. So stick around for that. Uh, if you haven't done already, please hit the like button and subscribe. Leave a comment below as well, please. Always good to get a bit of feedback. Uh, to those of you who've had, uh, who have commented, liked, and subscribed to the channel so far, thank you very much. Sorry for all the noise, it is absolutely hammering down the rain here at the moment, so uh, gotta get myself indoors and stay dry. Take care, see you soon.